I am back today for another Game Maker RPG tutorial. Uh, while I was gone, I made, I went ahead and made a uh, a room. I'll go ahead and show you what that makes uh, looks like. So if we open up our test room and take off the grid, we can see our first room, which we were we we will be applying collisions and Z depth for this character. When basically what that means is if our character is, is standing right here then he will appear in front of the bookshelf but if he's standing behind the bookshelf then it'll look like he's standing behind the bookshelf because by default game maker doesn't do that and it, it tends to look a little weird <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and show you how I how I did this. These are actually not objects. Uh, so as you can see, we still have our OBJ player. These are actually uh, tiles. As you can see, I have eight of them. And I am going to add a new one. So if we open up our backgrounds, this is where you put your tiles, basically. I'm going to create a new one. Load up the, this one, I think. Let me make sure. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I had another one. But basically, if you want to add another, a new one, you can go to the background, uh, create a new background, load background. You can load up any of these. It doesn't really matter. And then once, you, once you've once gotten your background, you put use this tile set. And... Since my character sprite is 32 by 32 pixels, I'm using the every tile is 32 pixels and 30 by 32. <coughs> if your game is 16 by 16, I'd probably recommend using 16 by 16. All right, so to place these tiles, all you have to do is go to tiles you can select one if you want to select more than one like this coffin uh, like this coffin is two tiles long you can hold control and snap it wherever you want so for instance you see the tile but I do not want that because as of right now this is this should be what the place looks like without the grid. So what we're going to do what we're gonna add, is we're going to add collision to basically everywhere where it needs to have collision. So what we want to do is create a new sprite and call it SP, SPR underscore collision. And edit sprite, create new. 32 by 32 is fine. We will give this a dark red border. Oh, my bad. A dark red border. And inside, we will change the opacity to 100. And we will fill in this. Alright, so now that we have our collision done, we can center. Actually, do not center this right, because if you center it, then it won't work properly. So then we can name our sprite OBJ underscore collision. <coughs> Give it the sprite. And then mark it solid. And then unmark visible. Basically, what this means is, uh, whenever our player, whenever our player runs the if place free command, it checks for anything that's solid in front of him. So, if this is in front of him, then he won't be able to move down. So solid, mark that. 
visible means that uh, in game you won't be able to see it. Uh, create another sprite and call it SPR underscore collision underscore off. And I'll show you what that is for. So test room <coughs> objects. And I'll go ahead and start placing your collision boxes I would recommend to if you scale the image down like this instead of placing each one individually because this will it's a lot better for your frame rate if you want to put it like that Okay, so now that we have our collisions down, uh, as you can see, it looks kind of messy, uh, mostly red, if you want to put it that way. So now if you if you want to play stuff, but you don't want to look at this, you can open up your OBJ collision and change the sprite to OBJ, or sprite collision off, and then now it doesn't look messy. <coughs> this is probably probably good for you know placing more background if you if you need to so now if we I'll go ahead and show you this just so you can see uh, sprite collision this is the on version if we run the game you should see that we won't be able to collide with anything well we should be we should collide with everything as you see I can't can't walk into this. I can, however, walk into the. That's what. I can walk onto the chairs, which is what I wanted. And these collisions are actually pretty tight. It's kind of weird. So as you can see, we. We're not colliding with anything, so we can't walk up. That. So let's go ahead and fix that. Our player is actually. I'm not doing what he's supposed to do. So if we okay, we're gonna have to do this for every single sprite. <clears throat> so here, if you change this to manual, we should be able to edit his collision box. And let's change the top to let's say uh, all right. He's 32 pixels tall, so let's subtract 16. And that might be a little let's let's do sixteen plus eight. <coughs> okay, so we can do twenty-four. Alright, that, that seems like a reasonable collision box. And then we gotta do this for every other sprite. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we have our collisions for our player down, let's go ahead and close that and we can run the game and see how it works. Okay, so as you can see now we are moving uh, in front of the bookshelf, which is a good thing. We can now properly sit on the chair, and the collisions might be a little tight on his on the sides. We can now walk through here, which is we were not able to do previously. Oh, okay. Seems to have forgotten to put uh, a collision box there. So, when you're making the map, you might not want to make it too clustered like this. Just because of it, as you can see, I'm, I'm having problems myself walking into stuff. And later on, we might, we might make it so whenever you walk down and there's something here, but there's nothing like in this direction and down we'll make it so the player automatically walks to the right and then goes down yeah. but that's, that's later on in the game so now let's let's 
I'm gonna create another another sprite and I'll make it uh, from something here. We want to make it a let's say one of these knights. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so now that I have the the sprite, I changed it from the knight to this, this little gold rock since uh, there's gold all over the place in the, the weird dungeon we are in. So let me set the collision box, 10, no, maybe 15. That seems kind of, kind of big. Okay, so try to make it as close as possible as I could. So let's name this SPR gold underscore or. And we can also use this for mining later on. Create object OBJ underscore gold underscore or. And give this the gold sprite solid. Yes, we want it to be visible. And now, let's create a script. This will be basically what we wanted to do is uh, by default you have to manually set their depth, which is right here. And that it's going to take quite a while if you have like a whole world map and you're just going to be doing that for every object because once you set an object's depth uh, if there's more objects on a screen it won't do that so say you have a a knight right here and a knight right here you can go in front of or behind this knight that, that's a bad example <laughs> either way it's it's a lot better for your game so let me let me think real quick. Okay, so here if you type in depth D E P T H equals Y times negative one. Basically uh the lower the number the numbers, sorry, the lower the numbers, the closer it is to you. So we just put in this script here, and we can call it find underscore depth. Now, if we go to our gold ore, add a create event, and drag in this, this little guy right here with the arrow, we can tell it to, to use the find depth now for our player, we need to put the uh, the script thing inside the step event because we want it. We want the player to to change depth every every thirty like frames. So it, so he actually goes behind stuff every time he needs to. So it's at our gold or right, say right here, and we can run the game. So as you can see, we can go in front of the, the gold ore, and we can also go behind it. So this, whenever you have a object that you want to, to use proper depth detection, just drag in the script into the create event. Why are we not moving? Uh, must have been a glitch. You can drag in the, the script into the create event, or if it's an NPC that has to be constantly moving, you drag it into the step event. And then it should do that.